How is it going everybody? Welcome back to another Many Interpretations of video where today we are looking at Edmontosaurus. Finally! Edmontosaurus has not had the best luck in terms of voting. Uh, just look at these previous polls right here. Um, I am, of course, it is the last in the list. I'm, I'm basically clearing out the list in preparation for the Tyrannosaurus video and the Tyrannosaurus video will be kind of like a, a mid-season type thing, I, I guess. And then after that, I will be doing the poll as usual. Uh, but anyway, I am very excited to look at Edmontosaurus. I think Edmontosaurus is an incredibly underrated dinosaur. It's in, it's awesome. It's a, it's a very fascinating dinosaur. And I think it gets a bad rep as being nothing more than just simple Tyrannosaurus food, which is definitely not the case in terms of this animal. So I am very excited to see uh, how it kind of evolved in media through the years, uh, the different design choices that were applied to it in different media. I'm just excited as a whole. I'm very excited to get into this, so we might as well get into it, shall we? So we'll start off with Fantasia. Now, Fantasia is of course dated. It was released in 1940, a time where our understanding of dinosaurs was basically, for a lot of them anyway, bipedal, uh, tripod pose, very kangaroo-like in stance. That same thing is applied to Edmontosaurus. It also has what, in this portrayal, what is described as a duckbill. And the way that it looks is where the, the name duckbill pretty much originated from because it looked extremely like a duckbill. Um, of course, they did not have duckbills and they actually had what was basically a, a beak extension uh, that was on the, on the front of their mouths. Now, that is something that was technically found with some of the earlier specimens of Edmontosaurus. However, when it was being uh, excavated or something like that, or I can't remember the exact process, but all I know is that it was partially damaged uh, when it was being studied or excavated, and we lost that extension on the beak. So we basically just had, you know, we had an incomplete skull, and we had an incomplete picture of the dinosaur. And so a lot of earlier interpretations made it as that, made it as a duckbill dinosaur when that was not the case. Eventually, of course, we did find another specimen that did possess this and that completely recontextualized the way we saw it just very, very late in the process. But Fantasia is just a good a time capsule to the past of the way that we saw uh, these dinosaurs. You know, it, it very much looks like what Edmontosaurus looked like in the past. And you know me, I love that type of stuff. I just love seeing how we view dinosaurs in a particular time. After that, there's 64 million years ago. This is, it looks like they're moving a little bit past the tripod sto uh, pose where they're kind of upright uh, and more so a little bit more horizontal, but their heads are held, held a little bit more upright. Um, Edmontosaurus is of course a hadrosaur and they would have spent most of their time being quadrupedal, meaning that they were on all fours. Uh, they would have been able to run on two legs for extra speed, uh, but for the most part they spent most of their time on all fours. And this one is also very representative of its time. It, does, it lacks that like beak sheath extension thing, uh, as well as the hands looking like this. V very different time. Uh, Edmontosaurus is very cool, and you'll see this in later depictions, uh, in the fact that we have a lot of really well-preserved specimens of Edmontosaurus, what they're called as dinosaur mummies. Of course, they're not true mummies. It's just uh, kind of like a little, little play on the words that they're extremely well-preserved. Some have skin impressions, some have that beak extension that I talked about earlier, and some reveal the interesting looking for, uh, front limbs. So it's gonna be really fun to see the difference between old portrayals like this and the more modern ones. Moving on to Dinosaur, exclamation point, 1985. It, uh, we get uh, a few Edmontosaurus, and it, it's kind of funny because we're getting a little bit more of a, an evolution, essentially, of the way that they look because, again, they're a little bit more horizontal. They're over a nest, which is something that's really cool to see. The heads are a little bit more upright, but the skull shape looks pretty good, except for the, that missing piece, of course. Uh, that's another good design right there for, for its time. And again, we're kind of moving forward in history, so we're getting closer and closer to Edmontosaurus's true awesome self. And then the dinosaurs exclamation point, uh, the PBS little animated documentary. We get a herd of Edmontosaurs that are a little bit shrink wrapped and are very thin in the neck. Uh, what's something that's also really cool with Edmontosaurus is just how thick it was. This is true for most hadrosaurs. They were very, very thick animals, especially in the tail. And that, you know, that's something that's missing in older portrayals. Shrink wrapping, shrink wrapping was definitely common with earlier portrayals of dinosaurs. And basically what that is, is when you have like the skeleton and just a thin 
maybe a thin layer of muscle and then a thin layer of skin and that's that's shrink wrapping of course nowadays we apply a lot more muscle and meat to these animals and edmontosaurus would be a lot more thick but the skull looks really good I really like the skull. It doesn't necessarily have that extension. It's very duckbill like, but I, th I think it looks. I think they practically nailed it in that aspect. Okay, and then we'll move on to walking with dinosaurs. Uh, so in walking with dinosaurs, it is named Anatotitan. And actually, I think a lot of the earlier portrayals have been named either Trachodon or Anatotitan or Anatosaurus. And growing up, of course, for me, it was Anatotitan. But now we know a lot more about Edmontosaurus. Dinosaurs like Anatotitan, Anatosaurus, and Trachodon have been found to be synonymous with Edmontosaurus, which means that they're just one and the same, essentially. Uh, Anatotitan, in particular, was renamed to Edmontosaurus annectans. Uh, so that's just a cool little piece of history right there, the fact that we called them this name, and that's just not what they're called anymore. It's basically kind of like a dubious name by this point. Uh, but anyway... Let's talk about this Edmontosaurus design right here. The colors are very striking. Yellow with black stripes. That is very interesting to see. I think that they partially used the Iguanodon model for this because it's very walking with dinosaurs, Iguanodon-like. Uh, one aspect that I think they got really good was how thick the tail was. As I mentioned before, Edmontosaurus had a very thick tail, but unfortunately the neck is thin and it has the duck bill. But of course, that's information that we didn't really know about yet. So, you know, I don't fault them on including a duck bill. That was just the common knowledge at the time. Now, the feet are also like the Iguanodon feet in the show, though I think that they are a little bit more fused together than it was portrayed in the show. Um... I don't know. I mean, they have a very brief appearance in this in this episode, and it's of course as T Rex food. Um, but I think that it's I think it's a pretty cool design, and it's one of those fun designs to really look back on, uh, especially for people who grew up with walking with dinosaurs like myself. And then after that, there's when dinosaurs roamed America. Um, I like the skin. <laughs> that sound, that's a weird thing to say, but I, I like the skin. I think the skin looks really cool and very naturalistic for the animal. I mean, for the most part. I, I like a lot more color when it comes to Edmontosaurus. I don't know why. I just think that looks really cool. Um, but this this overall skeleton, I think, looks pretty good. They're, main, they're shown as mainly being quadrupedal, except for when they're running from T-Rex to become T-Rex food. And they are a tad bit shrink-wrapped and do still have the duck bill, but I, I really like this design. I think it's very fun to see uh, just, you know, when it's being attacked by T-Rex, this is where I'll bring up a little T-Rex hunting in Montosaurus rant. It's fine because of course, Tyrannosaurus did hunt in Montosaurus. We do have direct fossil evidence for that. And Montosaurus was definitely on the menu for T-Rex. However, just because you have Edmontosaurus and T-Rex in the same documentary doesn't mean that we need to have them be hunted. Or maybe we can just see a different situation. Edmontosaurus, Edmontosaurus and Nectins in particular, was a very big animal. And it, it wouldn't really be a pushover. Like, animals today, regardless on if they have ample defenses or not, are going to try to defend themselves. Edmontosaurus was a huge and likely very strong animal and was probably pretty difficult to take down. In fact, if one got to be fully grown, or even close to that size, a, a T-Rex would probably think twice before trying to hunt it, because it was just that big. They were absolutely huge animals that honestly would have been very terrifying to see, like on par with modern day African elephants. Like if I just saw one walking around, I know I'd be extremely hesitant to get close to it. You know, herbivores are not pushovers, of course. Herbivores aren't really nice in nature. They can be extremely aggressive, sometimes for seemingly no reason. And I do think that the truth, but I, and I do think that the same was likely true for our boy Edmontosaurus here. Anyway, little tangent over. It's just because in this particular documentary and in Walking with Dinosaurs, it goes down so easily. Like it runs and then it just gets kind of taken down with a single bite. And not to downplay the T-Rex's bite, of course, a very, very powerful bite. Uh, but I, I just like to see a little bit more, maybe some kicking or some ramming or something a little bit more for Edmontosaurus if we're going to be portraying it as a Rex meal, uh, you know, in the foreseeable future. Anyway, let's let's move on. After that, we have Dinosaur Planet. Uh, they show up in an episode that is focused on Myasaura and, uh, if I remember correctly, Despletosaurus. And they show up at the very end to basically say that Myasaura 
and as Blitosaurus evolved into Edmontosaurus and T-Rex. I mean, you know, probably not, but anyway. But because of that, they are just the Myasaurus design, so the skull shape does not match up. The Basically, the whole skeleton shape doesn't really match up. It's, a, it's very much Myasaurus over Edmontosaurus in this design. And I, if I were to guess, I would say that was done for budgetary reasons, because they were in such a small portion of the overall episode, they probably didn't want to make a whole new model, or likely just didn't have the budget to do so, and so they just reused the Myasaurus model. And that's, you know, fine, but you just, you don't have a, you don't have a Edmontosaurus here, basically. You have a Myasaurus that is pretending to be Edmontosaurus, and we don't stand for that here. And then moving on, there's Dino Death Trap. Very, very cool design right here. The beak looks awesome. The head shape looks incredible. It's a very thick animal. Uh, I really like the way that the, the front limbs look. They're a little bit more fused together. And look how huge that tail is. That's what I'm talking about right there. That is what I'm talking about when it comes to a Montasaurus tail. No notes, absolutely perfect. The colors look awesome as well. Moving on to Dinosaur King. Dinosaur King does have its particular style, very representative of the time. We have a very string craft at Montasaurus, even the tail's a little bit thin. Uh, I like the colors. I think the colors are kind of fun to see. What I always like is whenever I look up pictures for reference, there's always someone who does a mod in Jurassic Park Operation Genesis for these for these creatures, like a Dinosaur King mod. Uh, I don't know, that's just an observation I've been making. Uh, and the head is, a, you know, it, it looks interesting. It looks like the skull shape matches up decently well. But yeah, that's, that's Dinosaur King. Now we will go ahead and move on to uh, the Jurassic franchise. And how I usually do it is I'll group all of the Jurassic content into one little section on its own and you know of course that's what we'll do right here so firstly <clears throat> so firstly we have Edmontosaurus in the Lost World Jurassic Park what Edmontosaurus wasn't in the Lost World was it in that herd scene was it in the background very like obscured by Mementisaurus or something like that no it was T-Rex food <laughs> it, um, you actually see an Edmontosaurus skull in the nest you know, the the T-Rex nest. Uh, figured I'd include it, because why not? It's cool that there's an Edmontosaurus skull, and I've wanted to see Edmontosaurus in an official Jurassic movie for the longest time, and it turns out it was in there the whole time. It was just the friends that we made along the way, you know? But then we'll go ahead and move on to an alive one with Jurassic Park Builder. It looks like it, they've opted for more of a bipedal stance for it. Of course, they were mainly quadrupedal. Uh, but I really like the colors and the striping that goes into some of these levels. Uh, I, I think it's very fun to see and very stylized and stubby for the game, which is always very fun for me. And then after that is Jurassic World the game. I love the Edmontosaurus design in here. I remember when it was added and I was a, I managed to get it. I absolutely love the way that it looks. I think in terms of Edmontosaurus designs in the Jurassic franchise, this is a very good one. Uh, I don't know why. I think it's mainly because of that skull. Like, it has the proper beak extension. I, I really like the colors that are used for it. I, I just, I like the way that it looks. I don't know why. And level 40, it gets a little bit of a sail. So, we got a sail back at Montasaurus. Can't go wrong with that right there. It's also brightly colored when it's leveled up to level 40. It seems in Jurassic World Alive, it's basically the same design, so... Everything I said about Jurassic World the game applies to Jurassic World Alive as well. And then there's Jurassic World Evolution. This one's very good. So they're portraying Edmontosaurus regalis, which is an earlier species of Edmontosaurus and a little bit smaller than the Nectons, but and you could tell it's regalis because of that fleshy comb on its head. Uh, that's something that we found in a very well-preserved Edmontosaurus. So far, it's only confirmed in regalis, so it's possible that regalis had that and Anectons did not have it until we find out otherwise anyway. Uh, but I think that it's so cool that they have it on Edmontosaurus in this. And like, just it, that's a good example of just applying things to give them like an extra flair when it's something that the animal really had in life. Also, its base colors are really cool. I really like the bright blue on its face and the kind of duller body. And, and I know that this design is based off of the Jurassic World website. I love its design in the website. It's thick, it's a very chunky animal. Uh, the same colors are applied. I think the forelimbs look really good, the, the huge tail. No complaints with these two designs. I think that these are absolutely incredible. Well, actually, it's not really a complaint. It's just, I've seen so many 
recent reconstructions of Edmontosaurus. And if you didn't know, Edmontosaurus had what is basically a hoof-like structure on its front two limbs. It looks like this. Very strange, am I right? Um, but that has become so normal for me for hadrosaurs that seeing these feet on Edmontosaurus and Jurassic World evolution is just so jarring. It makes these look weird, even though when, you're th when you think about it, these feel a little bit more normal. I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. I don't like it. I want to go home. <laughs> but anyway, we'll go ahead and move on to Jurassic Fight Club. Tons of tons of problems with this documentary, but it's, it's it Monosaurus doesn't look bad. I, the tail is decently thick, but really thins out, I think, a little bit too much after you you get past the base. All in all, the dinosaur is pretty shrink-wrapped, but I, I love the colors. I think the colors look really cool. They're not really as popping as I would normally have them, but I just think that they're a, they have a nice hue to them. Uh, especially with that contrast b with the counter shading, you know, I think it looks. I think that looks really cool, and I think the texturing is really cool too. Uh, it's just the shrink wrapping, and it, you know, its particular episode isn't best. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a fun design. And then Dino Autopsy, another fantastic design. I think we've seen this design earlier in the list, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty much everything I said about that earlier rendition of this this design is also applied to this one. Looks fantastic. We'll go ahead and move on to that into Dino Dan. And I think in Dino Dana too, I'm not too sure, we get a brightly colored Imanosaurus. Very fun to see. Mixture of kind of teal or uh, light blue with yellow and brownish stripes. Very shrink wrapped and the hands are the older version. And it does seem to look like a little bit more of the duck bill. Uh, but I think the colors are very cool. I, I'm a fan of those. But then we'll go on to March of the Dinosaurs, where Edmontosaurus gets a uh, pretty pretty uh, productive role, as in like the main character, essentially. This documentary focuses on dinosaurs migrating during the cooler months. The design, I think, looks pretty decent. I especially love how our little main character, Edmontosaurus here, who is a younger version, has stubbier features, which seems to be true for young uh, uh hadrosaurs like they're very very cute so all in all i think that this is fantastic the adults seem to be like a lot more heavily built and a lot more robust uh which is true so i think that this is a fantastic design on the animal the next documentary we'll talk about is planet dinosaur which is of course set in alaska these designs are also fantastic skeletally they match up really good with the way that that beak looks um and the colors I think are so cool. We have more of like a blue with kind of yellows. I think it looks fantastic. The episode in particular is really fun to see. Um, they are just a bit shrink wrapped, which is probably the, just the biggest uh, complaint with that. And we're starting to move to a point where the hands are a lot more fused together, almost getting to that hoof like structure. Now, I, I, I really like the way that these guys look. Their tails seem to be decently thick as well, which always gets props from me. Um, so, yeah, I really like this one too. Then, Walking with Dinosaurs, the movie. There's a thick fog that you could barely see through, but then out of it emerges a huge herd of Edmontosaurs as our young Pachyrhinosaurs look out in awe. I love the way that they look here. I, th I love their portrayal as well. Uh, I think their design is fantastic and skeletally matches up very well to Edmontosaurus, and the colors are so cool with the, the red coloration mixed in with the, the kind of duller colors. I think it was all handled so incredibly well, and I... You I just think that they're just a bright spot in this movie. They're just incredible across the board, if you ask me. Moving ahead, we probably have the, uh, or at least one of the most accurate depictions of the animal with Prehistoric Planet. Very, very good design right here. Has everything that you need in an Edmontosaurus. Has that correct looking beak. Uh, has those rows of spines that are uh, basically scales going down its back has the hoof like structure absolutely massive of an animal the colors look awesome this is it just looks awesome all across the board this is a very good design and probably my favorite of the designs i especially like with how with some of the uh, some of them, probably the males or something like that, have kind of like a brighter green color on its snout. I think that looks awesome. Biggest complaint is how the whole herd kind of got spooked by the little dromaeosaurs. Probably kind of unrealistic. I mean, who knows? Maybe it could have happened, but I just, I, don't, I can't really see them being too, too skittish. But no, I think all around this design is incredible. After that, we have the amazing Dinosauria. 
uh, little series. Once again, as I mentioned before, if you haven't seen this series, definitely go and watch it. Uh, Edmontosaurus shows it shows up in the final episode, The Last Tyrant, with a beautiful design. This also has all of the bells and whistles. Very huge, very, um, very correct in the beak, very correct in the the forelimbs. Uh, it, it looks incredible. I also recommend watching the behind the scenes uh, things. Of course, he offers a lot of really cool insight about a lot of his design choices and you know things along like along that. Just watch this series in general. It's just incredible. Dead Sound on YouTube. Go and watch it. Just could not be more recommended. And then we have Amazing Dino World 2, Edmontosaurus with the crest, the fleshy comb as well. A very cool green coloration with that, that uh, comb looking a lot more red. The hoof-like structure is present. Uh, it's got that elongated speak snout. It looks really good. I think it looks fantastic. It's crazy that we're to a time where, you know, basically you're seeing uh, the proper hoof-like structure on Edmontosaurus portrayals. You love to see it. Then, one of the most recent documentaries was Life on Our Planet, and it suffers from what I like to dub as the phenomenon known as Myasaurification, <laughs> because this is our second time that we have seen just a remodeled Myasaurus used for a monosaurus. Of course, they show up very briefly in this. The, the Myasaura had a much larger section, so it was probably just to, you know, budgetary reasons, much like that, but because of that, doesn't look too much like Edmontosaurus, has the skull shape of Myasaura. Um, they did give it the fleshy comb though. And what's interesting is that these would represent um, Edmontosaurus anectans, which is the Edmontosaurus that lived at the end of the Cretaceous period uh, when extinct alongside Tyrannosaurus rex when the asteroid hit. Um, we don't have evidence of Inectans having that. I have seen some portrayals giving it to Edmontosaurus, but as I mentioned before, we just simply don't know. It could be a difference between the two species, or maybe both species had it. Who knows? So really, I don't really have much to say about that little design choice. It was probably placed in there to differentiate it from Myasaura a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, this is just Myasaura called it Montosaurus as well. And now we've gotten to the point where, of course, I do mention the uh, Path of Titans mods because they usually do get asked about. The mod includes both Anectans and Regalis, so you get both the, the Crest and just the regular one. I've played this mod quite a bit and I absolutely love it. I love being just a massive Hadrosaur walking around and just being an awesome uh, force for force force of nature. It also looks fantastic. I think a lot of the colors you can give it look really great. The beak looks great. It's got the proper front limbs. All of, very huge animal too. I just I think they absolutely killed it in terms of that. The modders for Path of Titans really do kill it <laughs> in terms of their designs. In terms of their designs of these animals, because like it, it just feels like it was in the game like initially. Like I've talked about Path of Titans mods before, but like with the Smilodon and just with this, just they look incredible. Always have to mention Prehistoric Kingdom, amazing design. Everything about it is proper about the animal. I say proper, like it's a very proper animal. Just look at it. Look at this fine little gentleman. <laughs> you do get the, div uh, you get to choose Nectins and Regalis, of course. Uh, so you get the, ch the choice of that comb. But what's interesting is that it, in the game for Regalis, it's presented as like, an example of sexual dimorphism, as in only the male variant of the animal has it and the female doesn't, which is definitely an interesting fuel of thought. I mean, there's obviously a basis for that. A lot of times external features like that are used as display structures, and typically it's the males who have the display structures, so I can definitely get behind that line of logic. But 11 out of 10, I love the way that these guys look in this game. I do know that there is a an arc mod of Edmontosaurus. It looks gorgeous. Look at this. It's huge and a little bit thin, but it looks gorgeous. I love the way that the face looks. It has the crest or, or comb. I've been chain, been all over the place with what that's called. It has the crest. I'll just call it now. My hat. Screwing up my hat. But I, I think it looks fantastic. This is a great mod, and I'd love to see it. <laughs> you know, I'd love to come across this dude. I've been asked to get to this one quite a bit, and while I might make a dedicated video about the game, it's a the Roblox game, Prior Extinction, um, I might just do a dedicated video about the designs, but I figured I'd mention this right here. Edmontosaurus, I think, is planned for it. There are some work-in-progress models, I think, uh, but those look great. 
I think they catch capture what Edmontosaurus is very well, and I would love to see them in the game because Prior Extinction has very good models. You know, it's a Roblox game. You probably like if you initially heard that, you'd be like, oh, okay. But no, there's really good models in Prior Extinction, which is why I kind of want to dedicate a whole video to it. Um, I mean, it's on the list. I hope I do get to around get around to it eventually. But this Edmontosaurus, if it does get added, I think will look really cool, especially with all of the added texturing and whatnot. So. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we see that. And there we have it. That is the majority of the interpretations of Edmontosaurus. I don't include every single interpretation. Otherwise, I would name this every interpretation of Edmontosaurus. Um, there's a lot that I do leave out for one reason or another. I am thinking about adding a honorable mention tab, but sometimes the reason why I don't include certain designs is because I can't find ample, uh, like, uh, footage or photos of them so I just can't have a fair uh, look at them essentially like basically the whole point the whole idea of this series is so that you can get a general idea of how much this anim a particular animal changed through media sometimes there are designs that are just so similar to one another that they I just don't really have anything unique to say about them and that happened a lot with this like I do try to include as many as I possibly can but there are just some that I need to cut out for a few different reasons that's just something I wanted to mention I want to mention every once in a while because I do usually get comments saying that I missed something or I forgot something a lot of times things are intentionally left out. So as I'm making this video, we are about 500 subscribers away from 10,000, which is absolutely amazing. And I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Uh, this video will come out before the T-Rex. You knew that already because you're watching it. I'll, I'll go. But after this one, of course, I will be working on the Tyrannosaurus Rex video. I have been working on it a little bit. It's a, going to be a very long video. We'll see if I split it into two parts. I don't know how long it'll be. It's looking like an hour. If it seems to be more than an hour, it will definitely be two parts. Um, but I am working on it. We are very close to 10,000. And as I promised, T-Rex will be arriving at 10,000. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Uh, but this was Edmontosaurus, the very amazing Edmontosaurus. I do hope you guys did enjoy this video and going through different designs as much as I did. But if there are some that I did not include on this list that are your favorites that you want to share about, be sure to leave them in the comments. Uh, we'd all love to, love to hear about them. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching and have an awesome day.